We're here. We're live. <laughs> Welcome to our fireside chat. And today we have the wonderful singer, guitarist, composer, arranger, Mark Lambert. Thanks for joining us, Mark. Hey, guys. Glad All to right. be here. It's great to have you. So where are you right now? Right now I'm in a, a kind of a like a farm outside of Juiz de Fora, which is a city in Minas Gerais, which is a state in the interior of Brazil. Sweet. And I was just saying to you earlier, I was looking at some of your photos uh, that you posted on, on social media, and it reminds me of where I'm from in California in the middle of the winter when there's a lot of rain, those emerald yeah. hills, quite nice. Yeah, yeah, that's great here. The, the, the nature is amazing. It, help keep my sanity through this crazy time. I can imagine. How far from Sao Paulo? It's far. It's, it's about seven or eight hours drive from Sao Paulo. It's closer to Rio. It's only two and a half hours from Rio. Okay. And uh, when we lived in Rio, it was much easier to get to. But now, uh, we, since 2017, we've been living in Sao Paulo. So we don't come as often. But then <clears throat> came this pandemic, and so we, we've spent most of our time here to avoid being in the yeah. big city with no yeah, so I, I, I thought you were living in Rio somehow, and then I see Sao Paulo. I guess you moved down there. <laughs> yeah, I moved, I moved. We moved to uh, my wife and I moved to Brazil in 2004. We lived in Rio from then until 2017, and then uh, Rio was becoming a little too violent, and and people were not going out at night to hear shows because of that. My wife is an actress and a director. So anybody who would make a living trying to play somewhere in the evening, be it a musician or an actor or actress, the, the income kept wow. going down and down because people weren't going out. And so, so she got a, a job to direct Rent, you know, the musical Rent yeah. Oh, yeah. in Sao Paulo uh, in 2016 at the end of the year. And so said, do, you, do you think about making a change? I said, yes, let's do it. <laughs> and it's, it's been great. Sao Paulo is not nearly as beautiful as Rio in terms of natural beauty, but it culturally it's light years ahead. There's so many more places to play and yeah, clubs I mean, are always pre even pandemic. Was, the clubs. This, uh, oh, yeah, you know, yeah, you were there. there in the early, late 80, like 89. And I spent most of my time there and I went also to Rio, but I thought that uh, Sao Paulo is more of a uh, heft to it. Yeah, you know, like, much more heft, much more vibrant and easier to make a living as an artist uh, consequently. At least it was pre-pandemic, you know. Yeah. <laughs> how, how are the Brazilians dealing with, is it a second year without Mardi Gras? Or were no, they this is the first year. Last year, okay. it happened right before. Oh. Uh, the, 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 you know, it was in February last year, and then the, okay. the, the pandemic hit in Brazil in March. So this is the first year they haven't had it. It was strange for them. They're so, it's been an unbroken chain for almost 100 years now. Sure. I was just reading about New Orleans. They ended up, instead of making floats, they made their houses as floats so people could yes, walk around. I saw and that. <laughs> yeah, that's a great idea. Yeah. Well, the creativity somehow keeps us going. Yeah, you have can. to figure out different ways to do things because exactly. you can't do them the old ways. And who knows, after this all passes, it, it, will we go back to how it was or will it be some kind of hybrid form, you know, yeah. Uh, yeah. It's... be able to know for a while. <laughs> we're all like, what's it going to be? I mean, we're just kind of in this state of suspense a little bit. I yeah. Think. And yeah. things seem to be getting better, but then yeah. there's very, you know, it's just kind of push me, pull you a little bit. So let's yeah. talk about something great, like how you guys met and started playing together in the 80s. <laughs> sure. 
Well, I don't know who wants to start. Who, okay, yeah. whose version? It was Thirty-five you years ago. <laughs> Thirty-five 30 years ago, my yeah. friend. That's right. Yes. Wow. Actually, <laughs> that was actually maybe when... maybe thirty-six. Thirty-five was when we went to Europe, but I think we maybe we started playing the year before in eighty-five. Uh, I don't, I don't think so. I think you join us where we're going to Europe because Van, he has a guitar player that, that was yeah. for you. Uh, he, I think he, uh, the plan was for him to go to Europe and he could not. So that's, I see. Okay. So the, I came in in the same year that yeah, we went. That yeah. Same year. Yeah. So 86, the and full year of 86. Who, who recommended me? Was it Leo? That's a good question. Dave, <laughs> it, maybe Leo? Dave, Dave maybe Douglas. Dave. I mean, uh, yeah. I don't know who you knew before. Just the two of them. I didn't know you. I didn't know Jim. And I didn't know um, Carl. 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 Yeah. Which I, I, I just took totally lost track from you. Yeah. I ran into him in the village a couple of years ago. Ah, uh, yeah. yeah. And he looks the same. He looks exactly the same. Yeah. <laughs> it's so funny. You it's know, so yeah, you come in, you basically jumped in and then you played for like four or five years or something like that. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. The Bag It In. I remember we used to play a lot of the Bag It In. Bag it oh, in. the Bag It In. I even remember that. Which <laughs> then became the Sun Mountain Cafe and now it's the Zinc Bar, but it had many names, many incarnations. No, actually, it was the Paper Moon. Right. The Paper Moon was the first yeah. one, name. Good memory. <laughs> Yeah, well, I mean, a lot of uh, those flyers by hand back then, you know. <laughs> I think that was we a great a time, you know. Do you have a couple of pictures you want to show? Okay, so, well, I have a little medley. Oh, he has a little medley. It's a little medley, so. Go ahead. Happened, <laughs> you, you can see it later on the web, which is just sure. pictures we took. The, the, the pictures were taken uh, after, actually. Leo, uh, I was, not Leo on bass, I was Greg Jones. At that time, it's oh, right. like in '89 or something like this, about uh -huh. like yes. or '88 or something. Yeah, and, uh, and also I put there a picture of the dome in Geneva because oh my God, where we slept at night. Right? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> so we had we had an outdoor so cool. uh, sleeping in Geneva under a dome. So there you go. <laughs> maybe you can. Talk about that for a minute of what that was about. The, the sleeping in the dome. Well, it's a geodesic dome. My friend, right. Pierre Dubay, which we are about to do another project with, who's uh, still in Geneva, uh, had, <laughs> I had convinced him to build a dome to, put a, to create this theater piece. And so right. he, he did it, and they put it in the middle of a place in Geneva. And we played the gig at the radio station there. Right. And, radio uh, Swiss Ramon. Yeah, exactly. So, and then, uh, you know, that, that was a nice place to just spend the night. And we went there. And we it started, was so okay, cool. We're, We're in the middle of a park. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, Great. that was all that. Okay. So, let's a few pictures. And, and the track is from my first album of this uh, famous song called... <laughs> What are doing those little atoms? Okay, my name is <laughs> what it was. <laughs>
mentioned there was one picture there uh, that when you played it was in 2015, I think uh, 2015, and uh, blue, Leo, think. Jim, you and I were there, and we took a picture right. the way there. <laughs> right at uh, at New Blue, right? Yeah. New Blue, yeah. Right. Nice, nice solo for the little Adams, Mark. <laughs> thank you, thank you. That was such a fun band to play in. Uh, it was every the musicians were great, the people were great, and it was my first time going to Europe. Uh, That's right. I think all you form. guys, everybody, was yeah, the first time. To I think Europe. everybody's first time. Yeah. Wow. It it felt like my first time too. You know. <laughs> did you did you right. know? Mark, I saw the Matterhorn three times before Mark ever saw it. Two times. No, I feel like it's three. <laughs> well, you saw it one with me. Oh, the third time we were together. <laughs> third time's the charm. <laughs> so. I believe it. <laughs> you, know, you know, like in New York, would... if you're a New Yorker, when do you go to the Statue of Liberty? Like, never. When so. your friends from out of town visit. Exactly. And you have to take them as <laughs> exactly. ambassador, right? <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> Well, that was great. And, yes. and, you know, going to Switzerland and all places, too, because Switzerland is like, like a storybook place. You, 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 it, coming from a city like New York, which is so, you know, big and dirty and noisy, and you go to Switzerland, it's just like, it looks like a fairy tale. It's the first time you've never been there before. Yeah, yeah. yeah I remember. When we played in Zurich, and then uh, we took the train and ended up in Lausanne. Hang out. Went yes. to the mountain for two or three days. Yes. Also, Chateau de, right? Mark, my Mark played tour guide for you guys a little bit too. Totally. <laughs> no, because he, I remember he, he, Mark said, "Look, it's not a lot of money. You know, I've got a bunch of gigs. It's going to be kind of like a vacation. <laughs> uh, you know, you have places to stay. You know, there's not going to be many hotels, but you'll always have a place to stay. And you know, so, so I'm down. Let's do it. And it was an experience of a lifetime." Yeah. Ah, oh, nice. So, so that cool. was the right age for us to do that. Uh, yeah. Right. <laughs> the cafe, cafe, Bas cafe Basilis, right, in Zurich? Basilis, yes. Right, on Niederdorfer Strasse. I remember oh, that. Wow. It's Good like memory. These, yeah. these places, you know, the first time you go to you go into another country to play, it was so cool. Yeah. yeah Is that yeah. still there, that cafe, you know? No, that's not there. No. Yeah, the, the main place now in Zurich is called Moods. And they, mm. a lot of people play there. But the casino is still there in Lausanne where we played, right? The casino is there, but it's different. Yeah. It's not a cafe like it was. And they have a right. concerts and different things. They have nothing now. It's like COVID, it's COVID, everything. <laughs> right. Like, yeah. every, like the whole world is stopped. <laughs> yeah. And then you took us to that church in the middle of the town where for like centuries, Somebody would say the hours of the, the, the in, yeah. in French every hour. It have yeah. got to be in the church throughout the night saying the hours. <laughs> it's so cool. Yeah, I think they keep. I mean, they kept doing it until really? for a long time. I don't know if they still do it now. Ah. But it was kind of a. They were doing it as a tradition. You know, you go uh, up. Yeah, yeah. Some student <laughs> would do that and yell oh. out the hours. Pretty nice. So great. So. Mark, I know you've composed music, you've put out a couple CDs, uh, and, but, and you perform, obviously, but tell us a little bit about your arrangements that you have been uh, so successful well, with. Ever since I came, it's funny, when I lived in New York, I played a ton of Brazilian music because I always loved it. My parents played it for me when I was a kid. I was one of the few, you know, New Yorkers, besides the Brazilians, who could sing in Portuguese. So. That was the thing that made me different. Like when I moved to Brazil, and it's like nobody wants to hear a gringo sing samba, you know? <laughs> it's like nice for one or two tunes, and they're looking at their watch and they're ready to go, you know? <laughs> There's just people there who do it so much better, even though I, you know, I do, you know, do it pretty authentically. But then I started realizing I should just really focus on music from my land, you know, that I grew up with. Uh, but I, I came to realize that there wasn't a tradition for jazz or improvisation that that much in in Brazil. So <clears throat> did a couple of gigs and started calling standards. And I saw that first that a lot of people weren't coming to the shows. The second, they would lose interest. They didn't have the thing of like following solos. And so I decided to try this idea of instead of taking jazz standards, just take pop songs mm -hmm. from the 50s until the 90s, British, American, 
and <clears throat> rearrange them, change, reharmonize them, put different grooves on them, make some of them Brazilian sounding and put solos in it. And people like responded greatly to this. They just really vibrated with, well, I know that song, that's cool. Yeah, you know, it's, so it's a way I found to reach audiences with the jazz tradition of improvising and, and making your own arrangements and stuff. And I've been doing that and it, it, for, you know, since I've been here, this will be my 17th year in Brazil. Oh, nice. So and, I uh, have to it, ask you though, how, I mean, did you learn, did you take it upon yourself to learn Portuguese in, in New York? Well, I started playing with Astrid Gilberto's band around 1992. Oh, wow. And uh, half the band was Brazilian, so I heard them speaking a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, and I would just sort of pick up, you know, I started singing the, the, the lyrics, lyrics, not knowing what they meant, just phonetically. And then, then uh, around that time, shortly after that, I met Sonia Braga, the actress. And uh, we became romantically uh, involved. We lived together for two years. And... And with her, she started teaching me more. Oh. And uh, it's just been a process. It's so, not an know, easy language. It's difficult to learn a second language as an adult. Well, in general, yeah. You know, our, our daughter. Excuse oh, me? Are you? We're it's not, it's not an easy language, no. Out. Our daughter. Is, Say that again? Yeah, it seems like it's, it's back now. Okay. I said our daughter is 16, and, and uh, she's totally bilingual because I've only spoken English or since she was a kid and my wife's only spoken Portuguese mm. and it's just so much faster for a kid for an adult you know trying to uh to change the your way you think if your 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 hard drives are already pretty full you know yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah. what other languages but um you know it came in handy because now I live here and so I have to <laughs> deal with Portuguese all the yeah, time just, just, it's kind just, of necessary <laughs> yeah talking about Sonia she just said hi on the chat so. <laughs> oh great great yeah. i told her i was going to be doing this yeah oh, nice <laughs> wonderful woman yeah. i i do and remember you guys meeting came her to <laughs> a couple of those parties we had at her place yes right, in the early so 90s, generous yeah that was a that lot was of a fun. great time all right so why don't we play uh one of the videos you've shared with us which is sure. uh police right every breath right. you take my version of every breath you take it's with my group the Quinteto Radio Swing, which is basically the radio swing quintet, but I've been playing a lot with the two horns and, and three in the rhythm section. And it was a nice concert we did at Sesky Belenzin, 2018, I think. Awesome. Okay.
All right. Uh oh. Okay. We have a frozen mark. Are you with us, Mark? There you are. <laughs> Yay. Um. <laughs> that was great. I know you couldn't see or hear it, but yeah. uh, <laughs> it pretty serious swing. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> so you did, uh, it, that was, yeah. you already moved to in Sao Paulo. Yeah, funny. Were you, were you already in Sao Paulo there when you recorded it? That's recent, right? Yes, that, that, that concert was in Sao Paulo two years ago, so, almost three years ago now. So do you, do you have to change all your lineup for your band or people? Yeah, travel? yeah. I, I basically have bands in different cities uh, because I, you know, the main cities here are Sao Paulo, Rio, and Belo Horizonte. Mm -hmm. And uh, I know musicians in all the cities. And I've also played in the north in Belém and Amapá. And so, so it's usually there's not enough money to bring a whole band. Sure. I usually go by myself. Send the music ahead of time, rehearse once with the local musicians. Uh, but in Sao Paulo, it's where I'm living now. Yeah. So it's basically the band I work with all the time. And uh, they're great. You know, 20 years ago, it used to be this thing. There was this like cultural prejudice about uh, only Brazilians can play samba and only Americans can swing, you know, this, ah, yeah. this idea that, you know, and the world has become so much more cross pollinated and, and smaller that. You know, you can you can hear guys playing the hell out of jazz in in, in Brazil. You can hear guys playing great samba and <laughs> outside yeah. of Brazil. You know, it's yeah. not like it used to be where you didn't have access to this stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's samba school all over the world. I think. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. It's great. Did well, you then, did you play in oh, in, in Peggy Boy, Mark? Not Peggy Boy. Uh, uh, an oh. outshoot of Peggy Boy. It's called Back I to I think Canada. I remember that. Yes, yes. yes, I yes. For, for about three years, at least. And we did a gig every Saturday night. We had a gig in some club. In right, York. right. Uh, yeah, that was my introduction to Brazilian music. Actually, it's funny, I had a funny story. One time I was, we were playing in Jersey somewhere. And, uh, you know, we were playing. I, I learned how to really do the traditional technique and the tambourine, when the, the tambourine yeah. turns and all that. And I was kind yeah, of amazing. Right. And I sit at the bar at the, uh, uh, you know, an intermission, and someone comes to me and starts to talk to me in, in Brazilian, I mean, Portuguese. Portuguese. And I ask, oh, mm, sorry, <laughs> you cannot even speak Portuguese. How can you play Portuguese music, you know? <laughs> and I think those people had just come in. And after we played, right. and, and, and after they went and they apologized to me, saying, oh, I'm saying, you can't play. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> You know, these stupid little pressures yeah. people have you know, thinking that you have to be a certain race or a certain nationality to play music and you know yeah i think there's a maybe there's a it was that way 50 years there's ago a, there's a bit of a confusion about this about uh culture and appropriation of culture and yes. you know it's happening here i mean we had a friend that uh here in this in the, in the states that was doing negro spirituals and uh Spiritual, right? Spirituals and uh, with yeah. student here, black and white, but some right. black, one black student got really pissed off because it was appropriation, yeah. and it's that's this right. feeling like we're going to lose something. You're not losing; yeah. you're gaining. <laughs> and, and my friend, yeah, our more... friend is African American, the professor. So it wasn't like yeah. it was a white person up there trying to teach spirituals. So. Yeah. Was, right, right. It's difficult. It's a difficult, complicated, but it has to be well, just like in, worked out. It's <laughs> like in politics. You have people who are forward-looking, people who are more conservative. You know, you have this in music all over the place. There are mm -hmm. people who are just want to hold on to the traditions or are threatened by things that are new. And uh, you know, somebody was talking the other day about how the, the, the people at the Newport Folk Festival freaked out when Bob Dylan started playing an electric yeah. guitar. Exactly. You know? They're like, Pete Seeger wanted to go cut the, the power, yeah. the cables to the power to the yeah. stage. And yeah. people were in sense, instead of like saying, oh, well, this is another way he's trying to express himself. Let's see what he has to do. Let's give him the benefit of the doubt. It's like, yeah. no, no, you have to do it our way. And then you, I, you find that, I'm sure you do all, also, you know, and people who oh, even, in, even in contemporary classical music, you know, would only want to play music that was written before. 1875, you know, right. and, oh, and, and which way you're going to play it oh, and which know. way to play, which <laughs> instruments to play that. Right? Listen, I'm, I'm singing stuff from year 
1,000. So I, I have, this is for another chat. <laughs> right, right. Well, there was no recording music. then, you know. So. Yeah, right. I mean, it's like, um, it we're open. losing electricity, okay? There's no candles here. So we have to make <laughs> some kind of allowance. It, yeah. It's pretty crazy. But speaking of Bob Dylan, let's play the second video. Oh, yeah. Because it's a wonderful reinterpretation of a classic I, American folk song. Folk song? Thanks, I gave you the segue. Well, oh, yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah. A natural segue. <laughs> I'd say it's a folk song. Okay, it's a folk song. Originally. Yeah. yeah. Okay, here we go. <laughs>
right. <laughs> Bravo. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. That uh, that, that cool. soprano line. I mean, the the, the arrangement <clears throat> there. Yes, definite uh, wind shorter feel there. Oh, beyond a doubt. <laughs> <laughs> and I love the sonic word painting, like when you sit blowing in the wind and then the horns kind of just spread yeah, everything. Yeah. It's really, yeah, it's great. Our friend is asking in the chat if you are a fado enthusiast. Fado enthusiast? Yes. Uh, I, I don't know much about fado. I've, I've been to Lisbon the, the three or four times. Uh, I went to a fado club and, and I loved it. It was really great. Yeah. But it's not, it's not very present in Brazil. It's a particularly oh. Portuguese. Portugal phenomenon uh -huh. but uh it's, it's a beautiful it's very dramatic music and and the, the, i went to this place called the casa do, do fado the house of fado and they have these like uh, you have it's like a restaurant people are talking eating and uh and all of a sudden the lights go down and the fado band comes out and plays just for 20 minutes and everybody stops and, and just looks at him and then the lights go back on and people eat again and they come back on again. It's, it's an interesting mixture of both worlds. It's like a noisy restaurant, but when it's time for the song to be sung, you can hear a pin drop in the place. It's inter really cool. Oh, wow. It's kind of, a, kind of a nice thing. Yeah. 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 To, have, to have that yeah. intention. Rare for us, right? Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> I was just thinking, <laughs> yeah. you know, yeah. waiters dumping, you know, the, the dirty yeah. dishes in front of the bands, you right. know. <laughs> the blender making pina coladas at the bar. Right? Exactly. <laughs> oh, how I wish those days would return. <laughs> yeah. I never thought. <laughs> right. <laughs> exactly. Uh, well, Mark, okay. I'm I'm so sorry you can't play for us live today, but we understand you're in the yeah. country and it's not going to work I out. Don't have the right equipment here. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, but, you know. We definitely got a good taste of your wonderful talent. Good. And Thank of you. course, we love you, you know, but to introduce you to our friends, which is something we like to do. So, yeah. Great. And you, you're going to play a video of, of us, of, of Shadow Lines? No, no. You have? Not a video. I did before, just some pictures. Yeah. Back then. Ah, uh, okay. okay. Sorry, back my bad. Then, you I know, thought it was a video. Back then, there was no cell phone. Okay. <laughs> right. No one took pictures of, of, of videos. There's nothing yeah. until like the mid nineties, it started coming because people had more like video so true. things. And then, <laughs> yeah, uh, it's so true. And then suddenly in 2005, everything exploded. Yeah. In 2010, <laughs> you can, you there's the everything, iPhone, you know, but it's yeah. very different. Now you can't get away from videos. No, now you wish yeah, you were less. I know. Yeah, I know. People don't take it seriously with putting out music unless it's a video with it. Mm -hmm. You know, it's yeah. like yeah. incomplete somehow. Yeah. It's crazy. Yes. The world is changing. All right. <laughs> well, cool. So that was great hooking up with you. Yeah. And thank uh, you for this invitation. It's wonderful. I knew this time would go really fast. We could easily talk for another 45 minutes. Definitely. <laughs> well, you know, we might do, we might repeat those chats, you know, yeah. because there's no reason. Maybe one time when you have your guitar, then we can do a thing. Right. <laughs> Yes, or exactly. Maybe, maybe maybe we'll see you in person someday. Yeah. <laughs> that would be fantastic. Yeah, we're all. I, I think of all the years I've been in Brazil, this is the first time I haven't been to the United States at least once. Uh -huh, Two thousand yeah. and and twenty, I didn't couldn't go. Why I couldn't go? You know. Yeah. Hopefully this year the vaccines will come and it'll yeah. be easier. Yeah, we yeah. hope so. Definitely. Are they are they distributing vaccines at? in Brazil any in any way that you think you can get vaccinated before the year before the summer or uh, yeah uh, probably uh, my time is supposed to be in April for my age group oh great so, all right but the problem is you know that everything's disorganized here so they started and they stopped then they had the vaccines but they didn't have the syringes and so it's, it's unorganized and they have a president here who doesn't believe in science sound familiar uh hmm. <laughs> yes <laughs> so yeah. things you know we have the second worst death number of deaths yeah. in the world besides yeah. the United after States. The, yeah. so, us, right? After, after the United US. States, yeah. So it's it, it should have been prepared ahead of time, and it's it's all disorganized. It'll eventually come. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. They have this great thing here called the SUS, S-U-S. It's kind of like the NHS, the National Health Service in England. Uh, it's all over the country. These health posts, which are great for you know poor people, they have places to administer 
the vaccine. Oh. They just have to get the vaccines to these people to, yeah. so they can get it to the population at large. Absolutely. I think there's about 7 million people vaccinated so far here, but the country is 200 million. So yeah. okay. well, one, way, one to way to go. All right. Well, All right. here's to your continued good health and yours too. Yeah. <laughs> thank you. And we I love seeing you guys. I so know. Nice. Likewise. All right, guys. <laughs> we miss you, Mark. <laughs> yeah. All I right. miss you guys too. I miss New York. So yeah. thanks for having me and everybody stay well. To thank you. Listening. Thanks for your support. All right. And you listed my, my Instagram channel, didn't you? I'm going to put, we'll put everything uh, under the YouTube channel where the info is. We'll list everything right. so yeah. people can easily go there. Yeah. Fantastic. Great. Thank you. All right. All right. Well. Bye, everybody. Thanks. Bye, everyone. <laughs> See you in two weeks. <laughs>